Hello and welcome. It is the uh, 15th of May, 2019, almost uh, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Welcome to the Money Charts channel. All bets, trades of the like that is within each his own risk and their own reward. Ethereum Classic is up. I'll talk about that in a little bit, which is right now, and then I'll go over the Bitcoin dominance, go over Bitcoin and then uh, DGB and whatever else within this video is price action up to 93.887 as it lifted off from this uh, 76 mark just to the 18 average of highs but still the nice uh, stellar move and all the coins pretty much are going up right now that's uh, good to see and uh, amongst such uh, I'm kind of day trading that to a degree let's take a look at this other one minute time frame my entry position was in at uh, 12.02 I entered in right here, but I didn't buy it here. Rather, the price at that time was 912, but I was able to buy it like pretty much at triple zero eight nine nine and a bunch of numbers and a little more than that with Rake and the paying point oh one ETC to withdraw it, which is what I did literally at this moment after I bought it at twelve oh three. At 12.52, which is four minutes ago, the price was 9.22. Now it's 9.38. That's even nicer. That's nicer, nicer, nicer. So, uh, And I got 158 of 500 confirmations to go. So it's almost like a time game, really. It's kind of interesting. Now, I made this buy on Coin Exchange, And I did so because of XBY. It's unfortunate to have these situations come into place where... Well, before, basically, what was happening on the January 14th hack, the whole, like, you were like, okay, this is going to take a while, so you were thinking a few months, and sort of it was. And uh, then we get into, like, uh, March, April, markets are opening one by one, okay. Uh, it's like, you're just waiting for the day where that's available, waiting for day where hot, waiting for the day where hot wallets on the uh, altcoins would come available. Neither one of those came into place. And because of that, that means when you have a monopoly of a market on a place like Cryptop Cryptopia going through what they did, that's going to be very difficult to run their exchange. So I have no choice. I hate doing it, but I have no choice but to, on Coin Exchange, do the best that I can with what I got, which meant deleting all my buy orders. I did that last night. And that meant uh, to also, uh, well, I sold a little bit because someone came in and bought. So that little bit that I sold, I turned it into ETC, which will then be turned into Bitcoin, I guess, in a little bit from now. As far as the weekly chart on ETC is concerned, I got a whole bunch of Fib lines. It's obviously broken through them all. It's retested previous all-time low. This low in here, tested in here, resisted, testing it again. And being that is now technically moving close to the area of that resistance, even if it resists anywhere around in here, starts to go over. Uh, that could be bad times, but uh, we'll wait and see because any big rally from this, this like you see in here and here, it, it's due for one, and it wouldn't be a surprise if that were to take place at any time as well, even if it makes a pattern where, oh my goodness, we break down support, maybe it even goes down a little bit to say the 59 or 64 handle in another wave, if of course we haven't already started, and I hope we have, but the market will do what it does, a great altcoin uh, bull run over a significant period of time, several, several, several weeks. And of course, most importantly, uh, great volatility X increases amongst each coin. Okay, so we take a look at this. Now we've got too many coins to look at. Bitcoin dominance is in at negative uh, 3%. Now that is fantastic. Uh, as it's down to 59.42. When we take a look at the losers, that, that's the biggest loser. And really, not even gold and silver is really losing on anything. The spy must be up. Nothing is down. Nothing that I got anyway. And you know what? Let's go over some bit tracks, winners and losers. I want to take a look at that. DGB up to 176. This is fantastic. And you know what? I'll, my, last, my last sales have came at like 168. But you know what? If it keeps going up, it keeps going up. That is something... Uh, of magnificence. Uh, Theta up 13%, NEO's up 11 Litecoin against Bitcoin's up 12% or 10%. I bought some yesterday at the 115, I think, 114, 113, somewhere around there. So I'm glad 
this is going on. Litecoin's over 100 now. That is fantastic stuff to see. That's the first time I've seen that in a heck of a long, long time. Just magnificent. And Ethereum is up 9.9% against Bitcoin. TTC, which is, yeah, whatever, I'll take it. It's part of the game. And I, I deserve a little bit of this for being greedy myself, if you will. There's And my buy order is actually lower than 725. I reduced it. I just didn't reduce this line. I mean, technically, it wasn't going to hit. But, I mean, I was like, yeah, could I buy it 1,000 or 800, 900 or whatever it was? I'm like, no, go lower. And, well... But that's the whole part, part of why I want to play this coin like this is because I can play for like 30, 40, 60% moves and thus reap the big volatility that you can get in with it, which is why I decided to just speculate and play this coin, leave it on the exchange, whatever. I got a very small portion of what I hold on the exchange. In fact, I bought some Bitcoin cash and I have to keep it on there because the, the wallets are offline on uh, Poloniex. But, but the way I'm thinking is, you know what? Why do I want to send that? I mean, it's a gamble, I know. Do I want to keep like 20% of my Bitcoin cash on the exchange? Risk, reward, advantage, disadvantage. Well, the disadvantage, of course, for doing that or the advantage for having on the wallet is that you have them, you own them, you control them. And we can see with Cryptopia why that's important. But the advantage to having that small amount there is if because I ever need to sell it, I have it right there, I can sell it at any given time where it takes two, two hours to three hours for that coin to go move on to the blockchain. A DJB, it takes a good seven, eight minutes. I love it. I love it. I sent it twice today. Took, like, no time at all. I sold it once for Litecoin. I sold it once for that of what we see here in Bitcoin Cash. And, I, I mean, I got, when we look at this on the hourly time frame, I did it before the breakout here, which is fantastic. Uh, as I was getting in at the 48 right around here, so, I mean, let me get the exact timestamp because I know how to do that. And I bought this at 54 after I sold it at 52 after the DGB, that is. So we'll take a look at DGB next. So 54, roughly right in here. And I was having, and I, it was tough for me to get in. I tried to get the 477, 478 price. I think, uh, what was my exact number? It was... The 4802 handle. And then two minutes before that, I sold me some, or bought, yeah, sold me some DGB. And is it ever on a tear? Big time, big time, big time, big time on a tear. Already up to 181. I sold at 158. I mean, I could, it would have been nicer to get the higher price, so what? If this thing keeps going up, I'll just take more coins from my wallet. It takes six minutes to go on the exchange. And then I can sell them for whichever asset class that I'm looking for. But my ratios right now, as of a few minutes ago, wasn't all that close for me to doing such. But if this thing has the potential to go pretty good, then the way I look at it is, just like Ethereum Classic and so many others, this is just making it to the 18 average of highs. Maybe it tops out here, maybe it doesn't, but what's normal is markets go up faster than they go down. So it's taken two days to decline what it did from uh, the breakdown here on May the 8th. So that was what, six, seven, eight days down and two days up. And therefore, when we talk about even the bigger move, okay, now we got gap fill. Oh, we got Fibonacci, let's draw them in because I know how to do it. And I got a decent sized holding of this. It's just, you look at it and you see on my treasure, the U.S. dollar value of it, I'm thinking, wow, that's pretty good considering this thing went way down. But, I mean, I bought a whole bunch of it, too. And, of course, it's just only increasing now at the, at this point. So 400 is the low. We'll go 399. We go, or high, rather, 125 and 399. I'm going to put this in. I'm going to draw the numbers in. I'm only going to look at the, I'll keep a quick eye on the 23.6 which is in at uh, 164 and that quick eye of course has already gotten above it so we're looking at 195 as one of its next key levels so let's uh, just put it, that in there so I wanted so it's from this high so I'll go a little bit after that 195 there we have it and the next key level is in that of 256. So let's put a line in for 256.
there we have it. So my next price objective I could say right now is for a pierce above that, probably even break in 200. And then that works out well because if I can get there then I can get probably a lot of good trades uh, available to me back again. I haven't traded this against GRS so hopefully soon and maybe let me just quickly see if that's available to me. And it's close. So I'm looking for a break below 27.4. So if I put 176 in here, uh, 29. So I still need another 1.6 or so. Uh, what's uh, GRS trading at? Well, let's take a look in here now. Go to that one next. I still want to go through Bitcoin. I still want to go through the dominance. GRS is in at 5080. Not doing anywhere near as nice. So 50.80 in here, I'll bring it down a bit, but not enough where in here, 28.8. So hopefully if that comes into being, like say, for example, Bitcoin Cash, this is 29,670. It's just pretty cool because what do we got here? 49.26. Well, it's went down fast from that point. Well, that changes everything. What happened there? I want to see that. Anyway, that makes the ratio in here to 27 or 28,000, which is nothing for me to do. I thought this thing's at 52. I just typed it in wrong, I guess. Okay, so what that means then at 49.26, I traded earlier at a ratio of 30,400, so I needed to go down to like 24 or so. So it's got a long ways to go. The Litecoin DGB ratio at 7,045, and I really like seeing it declining because I've, pay, pay, I've spent a lot of Litecoin over the last month or so to buy this uh, DGB. I'm only starting to get these uh, buybacks back in place. And it's a pretty uh, hefty amount of trades, maybe, uh, whatever. 228, February 28th up to here. My last trade was in at 75, 40.95. And uh, the bold represents completed buybacks. So on the 13th, the ratio went all the way up to 89. I, I sent, spent zero neg negative, zero, I, I got rid of 0 092 uh, Litecoin and I accumulated 8,226 and a bunch of change on the DGB. So I, I thought, okay, let's just send 75.50 for my wallet. I accumulated, and this is with the uh, uh, 0.001 taken off. This is what they took off for rake. I got one point. That's it. And then I just stop mathematically do the calculation. So I got this one here, 81.57. I don't want to buy that back until the, I'm looking for LT buy, 5,800. So if the ratio goes to 5,800 or lower, I'll buy that back. What I would probably do is take about 16, 17,000 DGB and buy whatever Litecoin that would get me. So the next buy back is the 75.97. Which, which is cheaper than now, but I want to see this go down to 64.50 or lower. And then I still got this buyback, this one here, longer number here, 3.3 3 Litecoin there. This one here, this one here, and even this, not really this one, because that's just, that was just funding DGB, so I had a good enough balance to play with more than anything. I don't even know. That was just to put it there to show open trade. It works out that I've gotten rid of 10 Litecoin and I've gained 69,000 uh, DGB at a price point of around 6,900, which is currently now, oh, well, that's back to fair price. A couple days ago, that's, that was looking sick. And oh my goodness, I'm, it's doing bad. But you know what? That's part of the whole market volatility. What I'm trying to do is, of course, gain uh, coins by doing such and... If I'm able to gain 700, well, basically 0.08 here, uh, $100 for one Litecoin, so that's like eight bucks, whatever. And then in here you have like a differential to make this to 82, so 450, 650, 670. And that's like 1.3 cents, so that's like eight bucks, nine bucks. And the Bitcoin Cash one was of larger numbers because I was doing like over like 12 or 1,000 or whatever on, on, on that one there. I could, quickly show you that as well. Not as many trades. And I didn't bowl this. I suppose I should go like this maybe to indicate that those are completed crosses. 
So I look at this and I'm thinking, well, I looked at my balance and I'm thinking, wow, I have way, way, way too many DGB compared to what I own in BCH, ABC. Then I thought this morning, okay, well, if I sold 11,778, or a gate, that's what I bought last time, why don't I just take 11,500, just take a hair small profit, like 270, whatever, man, it's three bucks. But within this here, 0.31 to 0.37, that's a gain of 0 0.067 BCH. Ratio differential 37.9 to 34. And it would have been better. I would have got maybe 0.4 something had I waited to get a better DGB price. So on and so forth. Let's continue on with some of the notes. Okay, and then we'll go to, I'm, I'm going to go to bitch. Bitcoin and Bitcoin dominance, and then see some other coins. But it's now 13.12 Eastern Time. We'll see how many confirmations we got. And I got some waiting to do. I'm halfway there. Halfway there. So when you're doing these trades, it's good to know how, uh, how long it takes. Because there's some coins you just might not want to trade this way because of how slow it can take to move upon the blockchain. And maybe other exchanges have like a hundred confirmations or whatever, and it's just faster that way. Uh, obviously, uh, knowing that, well, let's just see what uh, ETC is worth, then go on to the Bitcoin dominance. And I don't want to use Binance because as I've seen right now, there's still no withdrawals, but still at the higher end of the uh, session here, that's all good to see. Okay, Bitcoin dominance getting its ass kicked out 3.13%. Look at this on the daily term. It has now broken below the 18 average of lows. Just for fun. I want to do this. And this is what I'm supposed to do as a trader, as far as you start to see a move reverse. We got a low in here at 52 and a quarter. And I don't want to put 52.25 because it's just going to round it to two numbers that way. The high is uh, 62 even, 63.15 it looks like. Yep, 63.15. Key numbers are 56.17, 58.74. We'll see how this works. Wow, that was close. I didn't even look at what the number was. I just figured with the DGB, it was easy for me to put the lines in. 56.17 again. Let's we'll see if these two numbers have any relevance whatsoever. However, within technical analysis, whenever you have a little bit of a correction, if it's not a complete one, we'll talk it, say it as. And a complete one is, as you can see, not even close to this level. If it's starting to go up, you still have to give it the benefit of the doubt that. Uh, it's a serious move if it does revert it back. It's the first serious correction that it's had. Two noticeable down days, 2.93% yesterday, 3% today, and Bitcoin's doing well. So this is altcoins getting its boost. Bitcoin's, of course, has been going sideways. We'll just take a look at this short term before. Uh, just curious to how the 76.4 played out. Uh, that number comes in at 60.39. I mean, of course. Yeah. Yeah, of course. I mean, but the whole range of that was like between 60.55 and really 60.17. So, I mean, it wasn't like, oh, that was the number. There were many numbers in that range that happened to be in this area. But, I mean, a number like 40, 60, 94, I mean, all you can say is, well, maybe it's a fast move continuation, I guess. But, yeah, that is that. Let's take a look at some winners. No, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, then some winners and losers. 8,050, so it's actually getting a short-term boost here because with 79 change when I seen it last. Within the 18 within the 18 average in the one hour time frame, last hour it managed to, uh, well, the hour before that, it had the green candle up close to the highs. It did make it to the highs this period and then uh, went down the lows within the period. I want to see this on the 15 now. Yeah, so this tells me here, we have this breakout above, come back down to the low, show three periods amongst strength amongst the 18 highs. This period on the 15 minutes with 13 minutes to go, which means it's just happening now in the first two minutes that this thing is looking like it's uh, raring to go, hopefully for some uh, crushing profits. Let's take a look at some of the top gainers and losers on Bitrex now. 
And Ravencoin is one of them. DGB. I'm, I mean, I own that. Ravencoin, I had to sell it on uh, Sunday because I just wanted to get everything I could out of uh, Binance, or excuse me, Cryptopia. And boy, was it ever a terrible price, but it's still a good trade, how sick as it is, because what else can I do with my Ravencoin now? They are completely, of course, hijacked and now for quite a significant period of time moving forward. Okay, the top loser, I've never even heard of Machinus. It's got a star, which means that uh, EGC down, what's going on with that on a big bull up day? Did that get uh, delisted? I mean, 21% is only 21% still. It looks like it got delisted here on this day on May the 3rd and sure enough it was removed so uh, no big surprise to see that kind of decline and wow what a serious decline overall as this thing was 780 and 790 satoshi it's down to 88 that's how fast it can go so if you're putting your entire bankroll or a large percentage of your bankroll on something like this well you put yourself in a high risk high reward situation and now you're hitting the risk side of it Okay, then, so let's continue on with uh, some of these gainers and losers. Again, some of the other losers. Uh, when was this added? March 28th? Let's just take a look at... I mean, it's only got 0 0.06 volume anyway. So all of the ones losing are on the low volume side. We got 2.76 in Dragon Chain, but it's still only down 6.2%. The biggest loser on here, on the bottom end, is 3.1. Well, it's not going to be the case for the upside here. Raven Coin up... 33%. Cannabis coin, which has been delisted, up 31%. It's up to 25, though. DGB, one of my favorites right now. It's up to uh, 30%. We got Hydro, Zed Classic. Let's take a look at ZCL. What's this one here, Expanse? Let's take a look at those two. ZCL is extremely volatile. If you want to look for something for high volatility for the two coins together, by all means... Uh, there's not. I, I don't see why not. As far other, if you want something of good risk, of course, because there's only so many. A lot of the coins that are the quote-unquote safest, like coins and the Bitcoin Cash and the Ethereum's and all the other list of those coins, don't come with the monstrous volatility that I think. If you want to trade those in a crossing, that you find that with something else, which is Litecoin and DGB. That's why I like those combinations together, because DGB gives it the feel of the volatility that it needs for that cross to have. Okay, so single hour term time frame. Uh, then just just a decent sized game, but overall, I mean, this this is the type of stuff you're talking about. You go from 11,500 Satoshi up to 1.8 million. That's over 100x. And not that fast. And then to give it all back, or vast majority of it rather, not all of it, but a good vast majority of it, down to 40,000 up to 430,000, so there's a 10x move, and just from here to here, which was part of symmetricalness, higher low from here to here, lower high from there to there, and by most by most means, all of them significant. It has then uh, had this downtrend, and this big day that we've had really is just a small blimp in this week's radar. Yes, the logarithmic scale might be not the greatest, but, well, this week here was 85.61%. Right now, it's up 12% uh, for the week. But just when you know that it's got those 85.6% moves, the amount of uh, possibilities for this uh, could be tremendous. I think Elastic might have been the next one. Emmercoin is one. It's still around. Uh, Verge, what's it? At 121. No Limit Coin, 118. That's, uh, that's interesting and uh, good for that coin. Something I'm probably going to want to get back into at some point later on. And I got people that I know that uh, still are invested in that as well. But expand, but it was down a lot more. And I mean, I got out of it much higher than that too. It's like one, I don't know, one higher, like 170 or whatever, I don't remember. Although I technically could click and search, I'm just not going to. So expanse, EXP. Let's take a look at that next. Wow. So all this great day is showing this on the weekly. 2,500 Satoshi. 
it's been in a sideways range between 1900 or so to about 45 and it has been we can say although you didn't know it then since October of last year but the decline and this is just from this decline it was even down from this point 60,000 down to 2500 that's a 20x gain uh, you can use all these strategies I talk about. You're going to get your ass kicked on your portfolio when this happens to your, to your market. If you can hit the up and down swings and hold those losses, a thing goes up here, you're going to be doing fine. But it's going to need for it to do that. But it's had sick volatility within its history. What it is doing, not the greatest of signs, other than maybe for one short-term bounce, is you had little time on its intro there. Now it's been spending a lot of time amongst that area. But markets go up, markets go down. After this down move, it went up, then it went down, then it went up, then it went down, then it went up, then it went down, up, down. This might be the last up, this might have been the last significant up movement. It might not, I don't know. But if history repeats and volatility comes into play, yeah, we may never see these levels again, but that may not matter as an investor within this type of strategy. For one, maybe you bought in at the cheaper prices where it doesn't matter. Or two, if, yeah, when the markets go like this, you get your ass kicked on your portfolio. But when the markets do this, you're getting your ass kicked. Then you're doing this. It's doing amazing. Then you're getting your ass kicked. And then it's doing amazing up here. Then you're going to go through low and high times that if all you get is a rally up to... 16,000, uh, 18,000 from here, and, uh, and it's like 7, 8x, and it's a half ass, lame ass rally. Well, then make sure you get your profits amongst there. And if you're making a, if you're playing coins within the strategy that I talk about, because as I mentioned, the most important thing within the two coins is to ensure that they are most certainly not going to go down. But if they can go down in a volatile type of choppy manner, then that's fine. If they go sideways like the whole doji train, that's fine. But obviously, it's, your portfolio is going to be better if you get two coins that can go up together. If you can find, right now, from this point, wherever the Satoshi is when you start, if you can find two coins that over a period of time, whether it be six months, nine months, 27 months, 48 months. And then over that period period of time, and we're going to be talking about that period being at a peak period, where the prices are much higher, they've been, all the prices on the daily, weekly, monthly are all, at least the weekly, monthly, are all well overextended on the 18 average and all that type of stuff. And the X gains are huge. So you have one coin maybe that has a 26X gain, and then you had another coin that maybe had a 11x gain. And hopefully along the way there's been great up and down movement so that you can buy one, sell the other, as I've been showing you with like the DGB and LTC. One coin has a turn, one coin has its big volatility and all that type of stuff, and it just works out. So then I calculate the X, Y, Z that I like to talk about for your overall portfolio. And if you have something like that, that can do 11, 26 times or whatever. That's just a hypothetical example. So now let's go over X, Y, and Z. Well, this is where the Y comes in. X is how much you gain via trading. Y is how much those cryptocurrencies against Bitcoin are up from your that key start point you're talking about. And down, it would be like 0 0.8, 0 0.7. Up is like 2.5. In this case, it would be maybe about 14, 15, 16, 16, 17. So this is 17. And we will start within, say, it's been starting around, say it was a $5,000 Bitcoin. Say Bitcoin prices managed to get up to, say, 50000 Well, that would be 10. Because 5000 to 50 would be 50. Or if you're starting now at, say, uh, 8,000, it goes to 80,000, How? whatever, whatever. So now we got Y and Z. Now, of course, X, you can only try to calculate or try to figure out a lot of how many days goes in, we'll determine that. But if you could, say, increase your portfolio on four times, which can, which can be done, 
where the average coin is up four times, maybe. In fact, if it takes a long period of time, you can maybe even easily do a seven times average. So 17 times 10 is 170. And 7 times 170. So this is how I multiply in my head. Relatively easy. So I'm going to do 170 times 7. And this is an easy calculation. Well, what's 100 times 7? 700. Okay. So 700 for 7 times 100. Okay, what's 7 times 70? Well, 7 times 7 is 49, so that'd be 490. So 1190. In this case, x, y, z is almost 1,200. So if you can find a way over a period of time to find two coins that can go up on average 17 times to a peak period, and you're able to gain, say, seven times on the bankroll, so we'd have to assume that there's a good chance that this is going to take us into 2020, at least. And then the Bitcoin prices go up. 10 times. If you, for every $1 value you would start with, you'd be worth somewhere near 1200 Now, of course, that's when two coins go up together and down together. Let's take a look at what might, uh, bad situations. So let's just assume you have those coins that go down like that. It's like, oh my goodness. So you get into coins, and, and they're both losers, we'll even say. So now we'll cover X, Y, Z again. So let's just assume one coin goes down uh, nine times, and the other coin goes down, we'll say, nine times as well. So let's, we'll even go, we'll go one-ninth. Now, Bitcoin prices we would say, and I want to make this uh, not such a great time for Bitcoin, but maybe, but still positive just to show what happens when you play losing coins in a winning atmosphere. So let's just assume Bitcoin prices go up uh, well to previous highs, we'll say. Say close to three times. And amongst that, you're able to increase your portfolio of what you own three times over because you have more coins because they go up and down, ratio goes to 100, then to 150, then to 200, then to 160, then to 100, then to 80, then to 120, then to 160, and, and then you just trade it back and forth. But if we take, right off the bat, if you look at this, it should be break even. And I designed it for that purposefully. You would take three times value worth one ninth less. So that means you would still be down one third, but then you would get it back in here. So X, Y, Z would be one. But maybe you only double your value of the gains, especially in a bear market because they all go down together. Well, that's okay. So one goes down 15%, the other goes down 8% in a day, and the ratio goes down about 7%. And then you're just going to get less volatility. So now, and let's just even assume Bitcoin prices only double. Well, now we can take 2 times 2, that's 4. Go like that. You'd be down half your value, more, with the Bitcoin prices in a double situation. So to say coins going up is important, yeah, I would, I would, I would imagine so, yeah. And... That's why if you play a lot of these speculative stuff, realizing that XYZ could very easily with ZCL, the EXPs, any of the things that have these shitload major gains and losses of X moves up and down, you can limit the amount that you put in it. You can say, you know what, let's put 50 bucks on this coin, 50 bucks on that coin, which is nothing for you, we'll say, or 10 bucks or 20 bucks on each coin, although that might be difficult to trade increments. But... Yeah, you put like 100 bucks on each coin, 50 bucks on each coin, all that, 100 bucks, we'll say. So now you got 200, you let it ride, you times that by 1,000 on 100. Well, now, I'm just trying to do that number, that's like a million, I think. It's 100, 10 is 1,000, 
100 is 10,000. 100,000, yeah. I was going to say that was a bit much for a little stake. So you can make six figures in spots where maybe this coin over a period of time, and I'm not going to do another one, we'll just say it does the same X move. But say we move into a period of like, okay, this was something else I meant to do. Don't ignore that. That was something uh, I was planning on doing. I thought, no, I did the math wrong, and I'll probably do it later. It was just more information about uh, buy low, sell high within the strategy. And then I just got into other things yesterday. Or what was this? No, no, this was for my morning video. I was going to say, how could that be? I, that was yesterday. I shut the computer off. No, what I was thinking about was I was going to do this example here. Assume something like this were to happen. Uh, what would you do? And these are the type of events that I'd be lo I'm looking for as a trader. But back on to what I want to do. I want to get my drawing tool. So assume this has like a 9x move. So that would take us to, so it makes it up to here. Say some point, say on this date, price action goes there. And other coin, it does the same thing. Bitcoin, it would go up again. We're talking about uh, uh, nine times, so about 10 times. That would be about uh, 70 some odd thousand dollars. So it's broken that 20 resistance. It's in a bull run. Most likely, maybe the obviously the altcoins would be in a bull run because most likely moments before this, and when I say moments, I probably mean several weeks, price action was around 10,000 or 14,000 or 8,000 or something, and it's had a nice run to get there. Whichever the case may be on that, that would mean you'd have about nine times gain. And, it, and over a period of, say, uh, nine months even, especially with upwards volatility, if you're not able to double, triple, quad your bankroll using my type of strategies when volatility is this big, I mean, that's most reasonable to do. Okay, so now, yeah, I take that like four times or whatever, times up by nine, and then, of course, Bitcoin goes up all those times. The gains can be phenomenal. And then we start to talk about when XYZ can get much bigger. Oh, what happens if this market gets here? And we start talking about a 70x gain on this coin. The other coin is working on a 15x gain. So you got a good like, we'll say we'll say a 30 average. And it's been a long time for this. Say we're in 2022 or 2021 even. So you have a 30 times move. You probably could increase your portfolio 12 times over easy in that amount of time. So we'll say about uh, 360 as not an approximation because 300, 30 times 10 is 300. So I need 30 twice for 60, 360. And then Bitcoin prices, now we'll talk about like six figure Bitcoin prices, like 20 times higher. So 360 times 20 would now be like 7,200. And now you're talking about getting 10,000 X types of gains. But in order to have that happen, Bitcoin has to go up big. Your altcoins have to go up big. And the opportunity for the X for you to gain tokens has to be available. And if, if Y and Z are true statements to be high numbers, then X should most certainly be as well. So if there's ever two coins you like that you know, find ways of putting them together and training them back and forth could probably do wonders. That's what I'm doing with many of my coins. And to wrap this up, let's just take a look at the stats in here, DGB 174 just hanging in there from earlier in the video. Litecoin 101 and a half hanging in there as well. Neo at 155, Theta 1429. Uh, so nothing significant here. Any significant losers amongst this time? I also got Doji. I'm, I got I'm bought, I'm selling at every order, but I'm waiting. Like literally, like okay, maybe I just got hit with one. We'll see. I, I'm waiting. I got 41. And I've had it in there for a good close to a day. Let's see if I hit it or not. And the answer was no, it didn't have the priority. But just hit it there now. Just hit it there now. Maybe it hit just at this moment. And no. I don't know. I don't know how. But I, this is what I don't like about trading, which I think. I don't know if any exchanges offer it. It should be done. It should be available. It's a good, it's a good number to know and have as a trader it's a, it should be very easy for exchanges to give you the statistic and that is where you are on the queue meaning if i'm looking to buy or sell at whatever number in this case i'm looking to sell at 41 
how many of the dojis or Bitcoin value is in front of me before it's my turn? And you know what? Those are just good statistics to know. And then you can see, um, write that in there now. And, and a lot of times you can see early on, okay, I put it in at 41, and at the time, maybe there was uh, one Bitcoin worth at 41. Well, in that day, maybe 0 0.2, 0 0.3 or whatever, withdrew their offers. And now I don't know if I have to wait for a Bitcoin to go through or 0 0.7 or what have you. But uh, yeah, that's, that's that. As far as any losers, again, I opened this up. There were no losers other than Bitcoin dominance, and it continues to lose. Other than on the one minute time frame, we can see maybe small reversals. Is Bitcoin doing anything over the last uh, seven, 10 minutes? We'll see. The answer to that is yes, because the price action is at 80.83. Having a decent sized run has gone to 8100 as well. Hourly term time frame. This is just getting to the point where, man, that's a strong setup. And I talked about it before, like yes, one of the videos yesterday, I think, about this hour, maybe this morning, I can't remember. I do so many of them that it had there hasn't been much time below it and and notice what happens when it tries to break above the 18 after it's in a downward or sideways motion like in here it was good it attempted to do so here well right now it's just going through several several attempts it attempted to do so in here and it fell back down to the lows but then it attempted to break out here back down to the 18 average of lows and this hour we're having the third attempt since that decline and as I stated yesterday nothing to change where I stand from here the probability odds as I look at it for a move to most likely go above nine thousand eight hundred and fourteen dollars and eight cents is significantly higher for me to see a move go below $6,341.90. Because every time I get to these key levels, I want to analyze, analyze the situation of its resistance level and then as quickly and as efficiently as possible, try to see what the new message of the market is. The message of the market here was not resistance because it was only short term. It never had any big pullbacks. It didn't stay here for a long period. It then had its lift off, but it was so early and so light on its move after that. You have to give it the pierce above benefit of the doubt. Maybe we're going to support this level. Maybe it's just going to be a fast move to the next. Well, it didn't resist it. It didn't support it. So far, this is what its move is looking like to its next level. And to me, that next level is ne that next level is ten thousand. Pretty well, ninety eight hundred change. Thank you for tuning in. Have yourself a great day, and I'll probably be back with more content later in the day. Bye bye.